Today I'm going to show you all the cool ways that teachers and students can use Google Sites. There are so many cool options that we'll go over in this video, so definitely stay tuned to the end to see all the examples. If I'm on the Google Start page like this, we call this button the waffle icon. I'm going to click on it and I'm going to choose Sites, which is in the corner right here. This is my start page for sites. So as you can see, all of the sites that I previously created are housed here. So if I ever have to go back and update them, I'd go to this page and choose the previous site that I worked on. However, today we're going to be starting a brand new site. So I can either choose from the templates you see up here or choose a blank site to start from scratch. So just to start, Google's provided us with the home page but we have to create any other pages that we want. Let's begin by giving our site a name, and we'll also put a name in the header up here. I'm going to pretend like this is a classroom landing page, so I'm going to name it with my class, just like this. I chose a name in the corner for my overall site, and now I'm going to put a title on my home page. Great. Our website's looking a little plain though. Why don't we choose another theme? On the themes tab, you can scroll through the themes that are provided by Google, and you can also customize your own. If I'm happy with how this looks, I can choose a header photo by clicking image. I can either upload a photo or select one. Now let's add some content. I'm going to insert. And you can think about how you want your homepage to look. I think I'm going to have a little introduction. So I'm going to choose one of these content blocks. This will allow me to have a spot to have a placeholder for a photo and some text. So here I'll enter my title. After I'm done typing, I'm going to click the plus sign and very similar to our header, I'm going to choose an image. I can always click on these buttons to customize it. So I could crop the image. I can click this button to uncrop it and to actually expand this frame to include more of the image. I could make this a hyperlink. So if I want my students to click this image and go to a website, that's an option. I can also duplicate it, trash it, and here I can always replace the image if I change my mind. In the Pages tab here, I'm going to hover over the plus, and you'll see I actually have quite a few options here. I'm going to start simple, and I'm just going to add a regular new page. Give your page a name. Now you'll notice I've added a page, and a navigation bar is starting to appear at the top. This will allow students to easily navigate and switch between pages. If I did want something to not appear in the navigation page, so I wanted a page to be hidden for some reason, I can always click these three dots. And I can choose hide from navigation. On this page, I'm thinking about having a PDF to guide students through creating a works cited page. To add that in, I'm going to go to insert and I'm going to choose drive because I've already uploaded this document to my drive. Once I find what I'm looking for, I'm going to click, I'm going to insert. This embeds the PDF and students can always click this little arrow to expand it into a new tab. One tip I have for you is make sure that anything on your Google Drive is shared with the appropriate people. Otherwise, they're going to get an error if they're trying to see this PDF and I did not share it with anybody. I'm going to use these blue circles to expand and make this frame nice and big. Not to worry, students will still be able to scroll within this frame, so it's not going to cut off the page entirely. I'm also going to add some text to give students some directions about how to use this PDF. 
you'll notice that I have all these different formatting options, very similar to Google Docs or Google Slides or whatever you're familiar with. I'm going to highlight this and I'm going to make it centered and I'll make it a little larger. I think the next page I want to create is going to contain some videos. And I have this idea to create some sub pages so students can actually hover over the title and choose one specific video. To do this, I'll click the plus and add a new page. If I ever want to reorganize things, I can simply click and drag. So now videos is last here. I've added my text here and now I'm going to create a link. So I'm going to highlight it. I'm going to click the link and paste. If you notice though, I have the option to not only paste a link, but I can actually link to different pages on my Google site too. So if I did want to, I could have students click these words and jump to another page on my website. In my case, I just want a link. So I'm going to paste and apply. Now let's go to pages and I'm going to click the three dots and I can add a sub page. So this is one option I'll show you. I'm just going to name this one example just to show you how this works. I'm going to hit done. And then it's cool because I can actually embed a video in here. So rather than having students click a link, they can actually just click on the video right away. I'm going to click insert and I could do embed and paste the link. Or another option is you can scroll down and go to YouTube. And this is nice because you can actually do a search if you don't have the URL right away. Once I've inserted my video, I can change the size like this. I can also move it around. So as I was moving it, you might've seen I have this grid and this helps me to understand if my video is centered. Awesome, so now you can kind of see what I mean. When students hover over this word videos, they'll see the different options. Another way to do a sub page like this, especially if you do have a video, I'm going to hover over this. I'm going to click full page embed. Give it a name. And I can actually click this button and paste the YouTube link and hit insert. The benefit to doing it this way is that as you can see here, the video takes up the whole page. And then I would just drag it under this parent like this, rearrange things. Either way works. This first option might be nice if you want to also add some words or some other information in addition to the video. The second option is nice if you just want the video to take up the whole screen like this. Since we are pretending like this is a social studies website, another idea might be adding a map. I'm going to quickly add a new page and show you how we can embed a map. Under the insert tab, I'm going to map and pretend like we're learning about New York City. I can type where, what I'm looking for and click select. And then now my students can actually get a map and get a better idea of the place that we're learning about. When I'm ready to publish my site, I can go to publish. I'll give it a name up here. And now I can see it's been successfully published. If I click this little arrow, I can click view published site. And this is what the kids will actually be seeing when they log on. I can copy this link and share it with them via Google Classroom or whatever uh, learning management tool I'm using. If I also wanted to say that this was the social studies site for my entire team, I can click this button to share with others and I could also add another editor 
So another person could be updating this website with me. I would just add their name here, make sure they have editing privileges, and then share it with them. Anytime that an editor or myself would make changes to this website, for example, we'll do that. Um, I'm going to click publish and Google Sites will give me a side-by-side -side comparison to let me know what's changed. And then I have to hit publish in order for those changes to show up. Otherwise, everyone will see the old version of my website without those changes. Something else that's kind of cool, if you click this button, you can actually preview what the site looks like both on a computer, so either a laptop like I'm using, a tablet screen, or a phone. The first idea is a project site. You could have a website with all of the documents that students need for a project in one place. Rubrics, works cited, outlines. This can all be available to them on your site and they can go step by step through the process. The second idea is a classroom landing page, just like we saw in the beginning with my social studies website. You can have all the links students need for a whole trimester or a year and you can create pages for everything they need. The third idea is an assignment. So the students could actually be the ones to create a website. They could create a website for a pretend business. Maybe they create a website for a historical figure. There's all sorts of possibilities. The fourth idea is a choice board. You can display a series of links by embedding images. So for example, a student can click on the BrainPop logo to get to the BrainPop website, or the student can click on a game logo to get to a game website. You could do a choice board for when students are done early with their work. Or again, if you're having a project, maybe you have all sorts of logos that the students can click on to get to different research websites. The fifth idea is a portfolio site. This can house students' work throughout the class, and this would be great for conferences. So students could create their own site and post images of their artwork or their writing. Just know that in our district, the students' websites that they create are only going to be visible to those in CCSD 21. So if you'd want to share it with parents, the student would have to use their Chromebook and log in with their own account. 